Good day, everybody. This is your boy Kevin from the Cigar Toe Smoke Crew. This episode of Cigar Toes. Hey, folks, how y'all doing? This is your boy Kevin from the Cigar Toes. Good day, everybody. It's your boy Kevin from the Cigar Toes. Good day, everybody. Cigar Toes. I'm here with a wide panel today, y'all see. You know what I mean? We're going to get a good discussion in. We're going to talk about some things. We're going to get some good perspectives. You know what I mean? And we're going we're gonna to open this thing up. We're going to all rate our cigars, which is five different cigars. All right? Today we got Michelle Tibbs here. We got my man Priest here. Chris. We got my man Chris right here. Trevor. And we got my man Trevor over there. All of us smoking on our own sticks today. I'm smoking on our Gloria Cubana Estelle. Maduro Augusto. What you smoking on? Padamo Champagne. Padamo Champagne. What you smoking on? Uh, Drew Estates Java. Java. Java? Which one? It mocha? Is the, um, it's, it's the mocha? No, it's the cherries. Uh, it's the cherry something. Okay, okay. Victor Sinclair, Rohemian Bamboo. Ha! Victor Sinclair. That's my guy right there, yo. <laughs> Victor, my guy, yo. I'm telling you, people sleep on Victor Sinclair, but that's my guy, man. That's I like I, I like Victor Sinclair, yeah, man. Miss Tibbs, what you smoking on, sweetheart? I stepped my game up from the sweet, and this is a Cariello Elite. So, okay. a little next level. It's like Woodsy. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to get different. So, just to let y'all know again, we're going to rate these cigars. Cigars are going to be rated on the third end. All right? We're going to wait on the third end. We're going to wait on burn, construction, draw, and a taste of the cigar. Right? Good or it's not good. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be the stars, it's going to be the middle. All right? So we're pushing on four points. All right, y'all. Today's topic, we're going to talk again about this COVID-19 pandemic, as I call it. Y'all already know why I call it that, but if you don't, I'm going to explain that to you. For one, a lot of people got different perspectives on this thing. And, uh, with all of us right here, that's what y'all gonna get today. So, in the beginning, I'm gonna ask a few questions and I'm gonna let them talk about how it's affecting them, if it's affecting them, the things that they have been doing to get past this thing, get over this thing, and let them just give you their perspective on what it's doing with them, to them, for them, or of them. You know what I mean? So, we're gonna start with the young lady on the left first, and that's Miss Shirley Tibbs. So, Miss Shirley Tibbs, why don't you tell the people who you are exactly, right? Tell them what you do, you know what I'm saying? Um, and explain to them how the COVID-19 pandemic has changed, not changed, affected, or whatever has done as far as you and your business. All right. Well, thank you first and foremost for having me. Good You're afternoon, welcome. everyone. Um, I'm Beer Room Candy by Sheila. I call myself your favorite Beer Room Candy consultant. I've been doing it for about five years. And COVID-19 has affected my business because we do home parties. So I'm used to coming out to your house, setting up, it's free to set up, um, host a party, you're able to see the products. Now we are reduced to online. Okay. So I'm going to be doing online bingos really soon. So ladies look forward to that. I'm going to launch that this week because we've got to stay connected. True. A lot of people are experiencing like in the house. If you were one thing. It's like if you don't have um, a bartending license and you couldn't like go over to that and start selling liquor out of your house or if you didn't know how to do nails or if you never Ubered before. Like people are learning that there are other ways to make money. There's not one way to make money. So during this pandemic, you got people doing Instacart. You've just got to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. So of course, I started thinking outside of the box because there are more than one way to make money. You just can't just use this time right now to be sitting in the house moping on Facebook. You need to be thinking about some things. Some people are painting their house. 
Some people are cleaning their houses. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just so many things. Use this time right now to read a book, take a course, build yourself up, expand. So when we do, you know, become open again and Maryland is making money and we're back booming, you're ready. Right. You've learned a skill. Some people are getting close to God. It's just a lot of things you can be doing as opposed to sitting in the house, moping, upset, right. you know, thinking about what you don't have, think about what you do have. You have your health, your strength, and maybe God is trying to, I think it's spiritual. Okay. Maybe God is trying to tell you something right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I want you to go on another path. So that's just my take on it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Preach, how you, how you feel about this situation, man? And how has it affected you or what you do? And tell the people who you are and what you do first of all. Okay. okay, my name is Lamont Robinson. Um, I am a preacher. and I, um, So I'm Elder Lamont Robinson. And... Um, I also work for the state of Maryland, a job service specialist, where we help and assist people um, find employment or either if they want to get into any type of programs. We assist uh, senior citizens, youth, veterans, we cover them all. Okay. Homeless people and all. We have all types of programs that are available to people. So when they come into our um, center or at the Eastside Career Center, you know, we get them in, you know, triage them and try to see where they fit in there. Okay. Um, also, my wife and I and, and my kids, we have a um, um, property management business. Robinson Boot, we do a lot of landscaping and you know property management at all. The COVID-19 has affected us because one, um, I'm working from home. I'll tell you that now, we're teleworking. And um, our workload has picked up due to the COVID-19. And um, I'm getting to really hear a lot of different things from a lot of people as far as, you know, as far as what's going on with them. Um, we are really trying to help them the best way possible, but it's hard because, you know, there's a lot of jobs that they will qualify for that they're not qualified for more. Like you were saying, you know, I would always tell my kids have more than one thing on their phone. Yes, but, well said. You know, I'm also a barber. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, you know, and I uh, drove track and trailers, you know, so hey, the things that I did do. Um, and as far as, you know, on Aspen ministry, it has affected us because you know we're not congregating in the churches no more. I do believe that this is a spiritual calling. You know, people are getting closer to God and get to know God because you know what's going on right now is written. It's prophecy being fulfilled. That's not fulfilled. Okay. Okay. You know, so we got to really take a look outside the box, like you said, and you know, begin to look at ourselves and see what it is we can do different. I told my wife not too long ago. I said, you know, black people can find a way to adapt. They will find a way. I, I ran into a guy, he had his mask hustle. One guy had the glove hustle. Mm -hmm. they, they're finding ways to make money. Right, um, Dennis. Dennis, everything. And there are still places that are still hiring, you know, and there's still a lot of resources out there for everybody. You know, so I would encourage people, you know, to get a look at that and not sit around and just wait for something to come to you because it's not going to come to you to stand still. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, um, I just told my wife again this morning, I missed the worship experience, the camaraderie, you know, just of everyone being together, but just to be worshiping in that place. We can worship anywhere. Right. And I do worship anywhere. And I can be in that, 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 that for my thing, but it's not like being in the house of God. Mm. I just see this, you know, being different. So um, I know that right now it's going to take a take time for the churches to reopen, you know, and it's going to be a walk. And we're being patient. We do our our, our things on, um, you know, instead of Zoom. Okay. We have our Bible study classes and stuff. So, have, cool. so not to cut you off, but has the Zoom thing been working for me? Because a lot of people have been doing the Zoom thing. A lot of people have been really doing the Zoom thing with, with congregations of churches and different organizations that they're part of, even with work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And has has that really been a plus for you? Has it kept you more steady? Has it has it has it fallen off just to keep you like, oh, we still in the loop? You know what I mean? Or has it advanced? Things which it's increased. I was actually for like the Bible study and and, and, and the morning Sunday school and all. It has increased. Okay. We're getting more people involved than we were even coming, that were coming in. Okay. So it's helping the churches to grow as well, you know, because there are people that don't know 
or might not have a church on and they said, well, let me check this church out. Well, let me check this church out. Right. And then it might be something that they want to see. And it's like, oh, this is a good thing. You know? So it's a good changeover because we're getting into the social media stage. Um, there's one church I've seen. Um, what is the church called? Uh, Greater Grace, I think is what it's called. Old East mm -hmm. Baltimore. Well, they have a, a balcony. And we saw this this morning. They had the... Uh, Priest team up there, and the preacher came out, and they got parking lot service. All the wow. cars pulled yeah. up, yeah. and the cars awesome. pulling up in the parking lot, and they I've been right up top. I've been hearing about that. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a few church. I seen a guy on the news the other day, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how the churches have to congregate now within the parking lot, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I can't say it's a, a bad thing at all because people still getting their worship, right? And spirituality is important to most people. Right. So, so with them still being able to get it, I guess that's a plus. Mm -hmm. That's a plus, and that's a good thing. But it's good to know that the Zoom, the social media phase of it, is, has 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 increased your level. Yeah, hey. You know what I mean? For for, for the most, you know what I mean. And, and what the fuck you the most about? Sure. Uh, my name is Christopher Massey. Uh, man, this coronavirus it hit a few of my family members. Uh, I got a close friend in the hospital still recovering right now. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as work, I work for an online school, um, so it's it's interesting. A lot of parents, from what I'm hearing, uh, they're not comfortable putting their kids back into school. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot more kids you'll see coming up with online, you know, online schooling, and most likely most schools are going to just stay online until they can figure out how to uh, social distance in the schools. Right. Right. So. Um, I also own a nonprofit organization called I Am Strength, so we help people that struggle with depression and anxiety. Um, and I will be going Facebook Live soon. We're just going to be doing Facebook Live with people sharing their stories. And you know, a lot of people are going through right now. Yeah, you know, I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm one of them. A lot I mean, of people literally, are going literally, I'm one of them. Yeah. And not, I didn't mean to cut you off, bro, but you just tapped on a few points, man. That really makes. It, it kind of opened me up, you know what I mean? Because the same way you say you have people that are going through it and they're dealing with it, I had the same thing. I really didn't talk about it too much. I did talk about it one time, but my daughter and my granddaughter mm. was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, man. And it, it, it gave me, um, it, it was a big smack in the face. Yeah. Big smack in the face for me, you know what I mean? Um, I'm, also, I'm also a person, I'm a veteran. You know, I, I fought and I served in the first Gulf War. Um, <clears throat> I was part of 137 Armor. We went in on the 3rd Infantry Division. Um, when the ground war started, we were the first ones of the Army to kick off the ground war. Um, not a big thing that I'm super happy, proud of right now, but I wouldn't trade my experiences for nothing in the world. There's nothing in the world. Um, with, that, with that being said, you know, I understand thoroughly, man, where, where it affected you by texting someone you know that you're close to, you, things of that nature. And to hear that you have such a program for people of that status who are going through depression and things like that, you like I said, I'm, I'm PTSD. Mm -hmm. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. Not to the point where I'm super cell shocked and I want to run and jump out that window and run out the house naked and nothing like that. But you know, I have my issues. Right. And I deal with them. So, so to know that you have a program or platform, for the most part, that that entertains that mm -hmm. and that serves as that. I'm gonna be at you. I'm gonna be at you. We, be we at you. are trying to normalize, not just, me, but um, everybody in the mental health field is trying to normalize that it's okay to have depression. Right. It's okay. Like and now, in this time of uncertainty, um, and you know, I've gone and spoke to churches, I've spoken to pastor groups, and we have to put the message out there. So, prayer is good, and you use prayer as a weapon, but there's some. Um, things that have to still be discussed and things you have to get through and push through. You know, the Bible talks about the stress that Jesus had to take his cup that he had to that he had to partake in. That's stress. Yep. We can't keep preaching, just pray, pray. No, Jesus was going through something. We all go through something. Exactly. So we have to take that time to really find out where we are, like right now, what's going on. Everybody is stressed about it at some level. You'd be a fool to say that you're not. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, and you know, I just want to keep pushing that message, man. Just find somebody to talk to. 
go through your feelings about where you are. Kind of like this panel, right, man. Thank right. you for inviting me. Not this a problem. Panel Thanks for being able to be here. Perfect, man. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you for being able to be here. Beautiful day. Nice to go, yeah, man. Yeah, man, on something that really matters. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's important, man. So I, I thank you, man, for that information, man. I thank you again for being on this platform. Absolutely. You know what I'm because this is not something that has to happen for us. We make it happen. Absolutely. We make it happen, so that's a good thing. You know what I mean? But let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Let's get with you. All right. I'm Trevor Price, um, not the football player, the real Trevor Price. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little inside joke that I actually have with the football player, Trevor okay, Price. Okay. Um, but um, I do armed security at Social Security, uh, main headquarters. And um, the pandemic mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. affected me in a lot of different ways good and bad um, good you know it has me it, I have more time to reconnect um, spiritually with God and to further my relationship there um, but then also it's I'm being challenged on a lot of different fronts also some of us are not used. Some of us are not used to being home all day, every day with your spouse right. or your kids. You know, so that's a whole nother challenge in itself. So it, it creates undue stress, undue tensions, and then you, you find yourself in negative places over stupid things. Right. Um, but at the same time, I still go out to work. Okay. And. I go out to work where most of the people at Social Security, they're telework, but there's still folks coming in, in and out every day. So I'm out and I'm being exposed okay. every day. And I got a, my youngest child is 15 years old, he's special needs and he has a heart condition. So I can't afford to bring anything home. Right? Exactly. exactly. My wife works in healthcare. healthcare. She hasn't stopped working, it's the same thing. She's out and actually her workload has increased which has put more pressure on me because now she's a little more irritable because she went from working three days a week to six days a week. Gotcha. And I mean, she works long days. Wow. From 3.45 in the morning, sometimes at 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So my daughter works at Wesley Super Supermarket. Same thing. Everybody. She's dealing with more people than both of us. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's going to the meet as a father, as a husband. You know, I take on that stress from both of them. I take on that anxiety because I don't know what they're being exposed to and what they're going through, the, you know, throughout their day. So, and that's just on top of me just trying to be a man for myself. Right. You know? um, but then at my job, we had one of the officers that I worked with who was actually a close friend of mine from childhood um, tested positive. But the job didn't tell us. Oh. That's dirty. Yeah. That's dirty. That's not good. So, you know, we go to work and they this is we have one entrance that's open. Mm -hmm. This is a big campus. One entrance that's open, but when we get there, that entrance is closed and they had to move this to another entrance. Wow. Didn't say why, just you know, all we open up over here, this, that, and the third, but and, you know, you got the talk going around amongst the offices. Gotcha. So SSA sent the email out to everybody saying, hey. Somebody on the guard force tested positive. So they put it out there. S S S A, Social Security Administration. Social Security Administration. Cool, cool. Well, I just want the people to know That's yeah, fine. what we're talking about, what we're dealing with. So Social Security Administration, SSA put it out there. They sent the email out saying, hey, this is what happened. At this entrance was, you know, whatever, whatever. But our company and our supervision there felt like they didn't want to tell us for whatever reason. Um, I guess fear for not wanting to cause the panic. Right, but it's then panic. at the same time, I have a right to know. Definitely. Definitely. So just because if I'm working on a certain post, so you don't know if I was at that post or if I was in contact with these people during that right. day. I get the whole privacy thing. You don't have to tell me who had it, whatever. But what I, I, I have the right to know is that, hey, if you were near this post on this day between this hours, right. there's a possibility you may have been exposed. Okay. Because by you not telling me, I go home and carry on like normal. Right. Now that I'm exposing my household.
versus self quarantining myself to make right. sure that but we didn't get that. So I, I, some of the stuff we had to do, I, I had. I can, I can I can feel where you're coming from, you know, by being <clears throat> excuse me, by being a, 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 a little infringed by the fact that they didn't want to tell you what they could have told you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's real important, man, yeah. because like I said, like you say, you know, you might be taking something home with your family, whatever. Yes. And I spoke on it before, but the things like people with weak immune systems, mm -hmm. man, some people don't know how weak their immune systems are. They don't. Yeah. Until, it's Until it's challenged. Until it's challenged, man. Until it's challenged. So it's important to keep your, your, your health up. And it's important, again, to stay sanitized clean as much as possible because this thing can jump on any one of us at any given time. If it jumps on us, we don't have to deal with it. We do not want to go through it with some people that we know have dealt with. It. So stay sanitized, stay hands washed, keep your distance. If it, if it matters to you in that sense, do those things, man, because that's what matters. That's what matters. So for the, for the panel abroad, I feel like uh, I feel like <clears throat> we've come into we've come into something that's going to bring us this change. I think this change is going to be. A change that's gonna last forever for the most part. For the most part. So the change gonna last forever for the most part. We'll probably get to coming back outside and then we do what we do, we smoke on, we smoke that, you know, hanging out on the decks or whatever, going to the lounge and things, but it's gonna be different. Yeah. It's gonna be different. You're gonna forever have people that are scared to do some of the things that they used yeah. to do the way they used to go. Especially if they was already affected by this. There's a new normal. There you go. Yes. There you go. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't realize, man, we went through, we went through a new normal already. Yeah. And we all we all dealt with it. I'm saying, hold on, I'm sorry. Everybody on this panel is over 35 years old. Yes. Yes. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we can remember going through this, what I'm going to talk about. We can remember going through this and having the changes come through. So we went through 9 11. Yeah, you see how everybody, like, yeah, the head starts shaking. But then you know you remember because you remember the feet, right. but you had, especially when you heard it. Your that day, was, your day was completely fine until you heard about that epidemic happen. And sure. us living so close to DC. Man, yeah, listen, right. the way this thing hit all around us here in Baltimore, here in Maryland, the way it hit around Maryland, between the plane that they don't even discuss about the, the supposed to go down to Philly. Um, the Pentagon situation. Um, I mean, everything. I mean, how did building number seven in New York come down when only two planes hit? And they didn't hit number seven. Something to think about, right? Something to think about, right? It's these little things that we don't get enough information about to help us get the right normal thinking of, of what the situation is. You know what I'm saying? You can take out of it what you get out of it. Until preach come around, until I, any of us come around and start talking about something that you have no knowledge of, mm -hmm. or that situation changes the perspective. When the perspective change, deal with it differently. It's everything in life, right? Yeah. That's everything in life, man. And we go through these changes on a daily basis without even recognizing some of them. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it happens. It's so funny. Uh, me and James talking for me live. And I was thinking about uh, everybody loves. Listen, now it's going to happen. Bro, yes. I'm a Marvel fan. Yeah. His wife can tell you how. Listen. <laughs> listen, bro. Listen. The kid, uh -huh. right? Spider Man was my guy. Oh, yeah. Spider Man was my guy. Uh -huh. And he's, he's a hell of a Marvel character. I mean, the youngest one, you know, that's fighting with the Avengers and everything, but he's a hell of a character, man. And his, his intake and his input on things that he takes from other people. Right. If you notice, Spider-Man always take from what his elders get. Always, he pays attention. Yeah. He pays attention. But you know, because that's how we learn. I mean, yeah. I grew yeah. up in a project, and growing up in a project, you know, some first things. Oh, it was tough. Yeah, it was rough. I had grew up Lexington Terrace, then we moved over East Baltimore to Douglas and Lafayette and all that. But growing up, we respected the elders. We paid attention and we learned from it. You know, I was always called the old soul. Reason being, I hung with people that was older than me. Uh, that's you it, know, that's it. And it wasn't that I was just that's sitting in the house, sitting around my parents or anything. I was around older people. And even when the older guys that were out there, they would tell us something, we would listen. 
Yeah. We might didn't respond to it at that particular time, but we were listening. And it came to a point where you were like, oh yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's time. I remember telling my mom that years back. I said, mom, now I get a lot of things you were telling me. Becoming a parent, becoming a husband, becoming a grandparent. I, I get it all now. Get it all now. <laughs> get it all now. You know what yeah. I mean? You're right, man. And it's understandable, you know, when those times that my mom said I didn't have it. I didn't get upset or anything. You know, you took an understanding. I to took it. an understanding to it. If if I knew I I can remember doing things wrong, and if there were friends my mother had in the neighborhood, you know that maybe like aunties or or uncles from my uncles or something, my dad or something. If I seen them, I was hiding. I, yeah, I did my stuff. Right. You know, but I learned from it, and you know that's why you're preaching now. And what helped me out? <laughs> hey, you know, hey. It was growth, you know. Right. It was growth, and, and also I'm a vet as well, okay. the Marine Corps. And you know, going into the Corps helped me out a lot as well, because I went in at 16. I went in going to Desert Shield, Desert Storm time. For a 16 year old to go into the military, be given a rifle, mm -hmm. and then being sent overseas or training to kill, it can do something to you. Yeah, it can, it can consume it, it can really do something it to you. Consume. It's not, yeah, it's not like, you know, out in the streets. It's a it's a big difference, you know. Mm -hmm. And we grow from that. Yeah. You know, and we got to take that growth. And I, I appreciate what you're doing, you know, with the mental health because we're learning that mental health is a big issue now. You know, it's it's not like people just say, oh, well, they got ADHD or they, they got, I have a son with autism. But, He's a bright young man, you know, and he has a high level of it as well. My thing about it is that, you know, even dealing with mental health, and I'm beginning to see this, we have to really begin to pay attention to what is going on in their lives or what could have caused certain situations, you know, and how they got to where they got, and then try to, you know, advance them into another stage. I think, in my opinion, comes from um, not coming from but helping them helping them out can be one of those things where we can try to focus their minds right but you yeah. know what not to cut you off and to add to that the thing about now with the digital age where everything is online mm -hmm. imagine all the, as a young black man still at 36 thinking about the teenagers that are watching young black men get killed ah online. yes that's traumatic Yes. Burn. That's why you got to be careful. You got to be careful with social media yeah. because you, you got to take time to take seasons off mm -hmm. because all this stuff, all these images, you see all over and all over again. You know, my my dad and brother, my dad is a retired homicide detective. My brother is a homicide detective. Yeah. Just conversations with them and the things that they've seen yeah. in Baltimore City. Right, right. right. You know, as the 300 a year, so they're seeing dead bodies, and now you got these young black men seeing people that look like them getting murdered. However, it happened on TV. On TV, yeah. you can go anywhere and see it. It's just it's sad and it's traumatic, yeah. and we have to have those conversations to see where they are and how it's affecting them. Right. Now, can I ask you a question now? When you guys dealing with the if someone coming, it's a case. What are you guys doing to help, you know, help them overcome their traumatic situation? Or even just trying to, um, what's the word I want to look for? Just beginning to, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, just kind of like touching on the base. You know, okay, you got this client to come in there. What are the steps you're taking? And, you know, how, what are you doing? How do you how how begin to yeah. unpack that? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 So, my organization is a bridge, bridge organization, so we connect with other organizations and we send them to different people like psychiatrists and psychologists. Uh, but what we try to do, me and myself, we host support groups and we have small groups. So I'm moving to doing Zoom now that we mostly Ooh, Zoom, right. doing okay. Zoom small groups. I had the opportunity, um, shout out to um, Alfonso Mayo for Mentor and Mentors. He has a mentorship with young black men. Alfonso, Alfonso Mayo? Alfonso Mayo. Big shout out to Alfonso Mayo, whoever you are, wherever you are. Big shout yeah. out to you. And, you know, I had a chance to come on their Zoom meeting because they meet every week and talk to them. 
and man, these kids are smart. And how they cope and how they manage, feeling like sometimes they don't have anybody to speak to. So as far as my organization, the first thing we try to do is get them to link up with somebody. You gotta link up with somebody that can help you through it, not somebody that's gonna tell you, you know, oh man, don't worry about those feelings, you'll get over it. No, you won't get over it. Yeah, Some of the yeah. stuff you can. Yeah, swallowing it and trying to put it to the side don't do nothing to the, to the problem. And itself. that's in, I won't even just say in the black community, that's just in man culture, not to deal with your feelings. Right. We've you been know, conditioned, we've been conditioned yeah, and trained yeah. that way, man. Like, yeah. just take things and don't worry about it. Right. You know what I mean? Not even worrying about, look, it's going to come back. Yeah. And it may it may bite you, you know, where you don't want to be bit, but it's going to come back if you don't deal with it. Yeah. And, and not the, not the jump track. No, you go, man. Go Based off of something that you said, you said that your son has autism. And <clears throat> a guy had raised my flag on the whole autism thing at one point and um, had drew it back to what I, you know, what I, I didn't really know much about at the time, which was vaccinations. So with this, with this pandemic, just yesterday, I had a guy pull, well, he didn't pull me up. He was talking about it. He ended up talking to me about the situation and he broke it down. Now, what he broke down, I didn't go do the actual math, all right? I didn't know. Because it was interrupted. So he said, break down Corona. He said, do the numbers on the letters that spell out Corona, right? The number we fall at in the alphabet. And you come up with 666. We all know what that's supposed to mean. We know some things can just happen, but that's that. Now, the one and the nine, he also said, was the first letter in the alphabet. A, right? The ninth letter, the I. Count it up if I'm wrong. It should be the I, artificial intelligence. Vaccines is what's coming next. What's in the vaccines? What's in the vaccines? The vaccines is what we get put in us to help us fight off supposed to fight off those diseases, those those viruses, those whatever, right? If these things are causing, if these things are causing our kids to come up with autism and they consider ADHD and things of this nature, what do we do? And Shayla, I'm gonna start with you. What do you think we could do, what we should do to, to, to try to like move this part into another sector because if it was up to me, I don't want my kids getting vaccinated. I'm, I'm, that's me though. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Right? So I would be preparing to homeschool and, you know, watch the vaccinations and things of that nature. But I would have to recondition how I would raise my child. See, I thought about it too, but I think that's why, you know, if you look on the social media, several ladies are on my timeline. One of them comes to mind. Um, Fleming is her last name. Um, Tamara. She's Tamara. got a um, she's got a spot over on Harford Road, and she also is a um, what you call it. She does. She what you call it? I'm sorry. I lost thought, and I, I can see it. Tamara Fleming. She's got a spot on Harford Road, and then she also like um, does yoga. Okay. She's like physically fit, but one thing she encourages is taking the elderberry, okay. taking the sea moss, eating right, right, eating healthy. I think we're gonna have to go back to what our grandparents taught us: um, eat more healthier herbs, cooking out all food. Right. Like I've never bought a fruit and vegetable wash, but I have it now. Okay. And I'm spraying my fruits and vegetables, letting them soak running warm water on them you know because when you go to the market people are touching everything right. so i i feel like i don't know if vaccinations are the answer but i'm feeling like maybe we just need to eat healthy prepare our food um you know take our fruits and vegetables definitely exercise get down to a healthy weight but I, i've been thinking about that you bring up a great point so please what you think about i don't think that you know because i myself i'm a pescatarian okay I, um, I stopped eating meat almost 20 years ago. One second. Explain to the viewers what a pescatarian is. A pescatarian is a vegetarian that you see. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm more geared to the vegetarian okay. side. And, you know, so I'm about to wash and eating healthy and everything. I, I really want to also get back into 
enjoying the whole food. Yeah, there you go. You know, there you go. Growing up, you know, I was brought up, you know, running back and forth down to Jetersville, Virginia, where my family was from. So I was, I saw the farm lands and all that. So it's like, remember years ago, out where Owens Mills is now, all the buildings, it was farmland. Mm -hmm. And we, me and my cousins used to go out there and we used to go out there and, and, and raid the cornfields. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You know? <laughs> but, um, it's all coming out now. It, yeah, right? <laughs> I repent. <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, the, the, the whole vaccination thing, I, I, I've i always had a problem with it. Mm. From even going to the military, from growing up, yeah. you yeah. know, even like now, you know, with dealing with different, you know, illnesses and stuff. I don't like the team stuff. But right? I know that they say you have to, but then your body can become dependent. Right? That's true. You That's know, true. It don't matter if you nodding off or, or whatever, but your body can start becoming dependent off of it. Yeah. And I know myself, I do want to look at you more of the natural herbs. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of young ladies, my wife was one, they're getting into the, going back into the natural herbs, as far as their hair and yeah. stuff like that, and skin and all, so that that might be something good to begin to look at. Yeah, I mean, you, know? you, 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 you want to put things in your body, man, that can sustain the body and adhere to the body. Of course. Um, you wanted to build up on parts of the body that need the help, which mm -hmm. is our immune system for the most yeah, part. Yeah, absolutely. Your immune system. You, listen, when you start to change the way you eat to a correct phase or even a worse phase, you'll start to think that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Think different. Your body, Carry your body different. reacts, your body different. reacts different. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? So you're going to think different. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? And with those things having to process foods, man, that we're taking in on a regular basis, it's not good for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So these things, again, it matters. And this is what this platform is about. Putting out the things that matter. It's a different kind of cigar show. You know what I'm saying? So with, with, with that being said, man, I want to, again, I want to thank each and every one of you yeah, for me. being here, man, to give our viewers a chance to see you perspectives and people that do different things on one side of life, but that can come back and do the same thing on another side of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And we all get a solid, separate enjoyment out of it. And it's not just a man's thing, ladies. It's not just a man's thing. <laughs> you look right here to my left over here, to the far end. Right. It's not a man's thing. It's a us thing. It's a us That's thing. Right. It's, it's about the culture, us. man. We got to continue to push the culture forward. This is something different for most people. It's strange for even a lot more. But for the ones that's on the side of the track, we enjoy it. Now think about this. All right, we, we grew up seven days. Right. You know, on that time when we had we all. We had hair. <laughs> yeah. I tried to grow my hair when I the pandemic first started. Yeah, I tried to grow it. Y'all see, I still got my ain't take mine. It didn't work. <laughs> but we grew up in 70s babies. Right. So during that time, you know, things were. Well, I'm, 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 I'm born in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, good, good. so following, you following. had the time change. <laughs> right. Um, then you had the 80s babies came in, you know, uh, that, 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 you know, more of the hip hop era started. Mm -hmm. That's when it started beginning. By the 90s, crack heard and swamped everything. It, it, it just hit, you know. So we saw different pandemics as we went on, different things and changes. Right now, we in this pandemic, as you call it, mm -hmm. and there are babies being born. They're gonna come up being born to us as a new normal, mm -hmm. but to them, it's gonna be normal until it has another change. Exactly. You know, which yeah. which kind of goes back to what I was saying. Like we went through it before, and we see like. Chris, he was younger. We were grown mm -hmm. when 9-11 happened. Yeah. He was, he was still in school, right? 12th grade. 12th grade. Yeah. 12th grade. Mm -hmm. He ain't even fully developed his mind to think about what he wanted to do when he get out when he get out of school. Went to college? No. I went to a trade school. Okay, okay. So at that point, I'm quite sure he probably was like, man, look, I'm gonna do something. I just don't really know. We didn't have a lot to say on the, in front of us to say, look, we're gonna do this. What they told us. Get out of high school, go to college. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing. Did, in, ain't nothing in school. Nothing yeah. in school helped us develop a plan. Yeah. There you go. Okay, I, at our, at our schools wasn't teaching us wasn't to teaching. be individuals and to be independent and right. to right. build wealth and finances, so credit, and everything yeah. that you need to survive. Today. Well said. What the world, what the world says you need to survive. Right. Okay. 
survive without it because many of us many of us have, have done it. Many of them but still doing it. Still doing it. Still doing it. But we had an unfair advantage. All it was is go to school. Mm -hmm. Go to school. Get out of school. Go to school. Go to college. Go to school again. Yeah, exactly. And then you got most of your people who went to college not even working in the field that they went to that college for. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, bro. You have exactly, bro. Mm -hmm. people can't even get so you keep pushing school, pushing school, pushing school. But you're not you're not pushing the education behind it, you know. Do something. If you want, to, I'm not against school. I'm not against. Yeah. I'm not against education. Education is important. But Absolutely. don't keep telling me, you know, go to school, go to school, go to college. Go, oh, you gotta go to college. Okay, I go to college then. What? Because if I'm not going to college for something that I know I'm going to pursue later on, you know, because. Your, your dream changes so many times. Yeah. Yes. You know, from the time you're little, because I know I wanted to be a thousand and one things. Right. Yeah. You feel me? And I was and I was passionate about each one. Yeah, exactly. But when I graduated from high school, I didn't go to college. I graduated from high school, and what I thought I wanted to be wasn't really that relevant to me at that time. I didn't know what I wanted. I wanted. I was going to go into the military. Right. But again, I was it was around that 9/11 time, and my two oldest kids were born before I graduated from high school. Okay. So, you know, I met my wife in the ninth grade. Mm. And, um, got, got high school love. So yeah, so I was, <laughs> so I'm like, you know, okay, I was, I was passionate about, I want to go in the military. I was going to the Marines, that's where I was going. You know, I was all geared up for it and everything. I was supposed to go to med everything. But then got to the point, okay, we're going back to war. I can't leave my wife and my two kids here yeah. and go over there and not knowing what the outcome is going to be right. I still wanted to go but I sacrificed that because I didn't grow up with, with my father okay he was there he was around right but he just wasn't around me even and that was one thing that I knew growing up I refused to put my children right I'm not I'm not well, one I'm not gonna have another man raising my child two I'm not gonna miss out on the things that I missed out on. I have to be there for them and I have to support them in the areas that I didn't get to support. Which, you know, and I wouldn't change anything I went through because it's made me who I am today. Exactly. But at the same time, I made a decision. Because once I had them kids, it was no longer about me. Right. You know? So that was just, you know, the whole thing. You know, don't keep saying education, education, education. But then you're not explaining to us, you know, oh, well, you got to do certain things, make sure you. Just they, they're, not, they're not giving us enough in school to help develop the mindset mm -hmm. to go beyond school without them, yeah. that we still need school. Exactly. To your question, um, I think what we can do as it relates to vaccines. Go and see what vaccines are. What are they putting in these vaccines? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Putting in our bodies. Mm -hmm. and, um, see what you're putting in your body as far as, far as food yeah you know we've been talking about you know the, the fruits and vegetables i might have to bring it back to the bible again mm -hmm. how daniel was able to hmm. challenge the king and said okay y'all go ahead and eat that talk that talk boy talk I'm, a, talk. I'm, a, I'm gonna eat this right i'm gonna eat fruits let's and vegetables, see where we are and we're gonna see where we are yeah and he showed him like give me 10 days that's all i need y'all eat for 10 days and it, it goes to show and, and like sheila said earlier like read we have yeah. to read. There's so much free information. Educate yourself. You have to educate yourself. There's so much free information out there. Right now in this uncertain times, you mentioned CMOS, right. elderberry. Find out what you should be putting in your body, what you shouldn't. And if you have some type of addiction, like I have a friend who's addicted to soda, find out what these things and how it reacts to your body. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. once you find, that's what helped me yeah. cut out certain things. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling somebody yesterday, like I haven't eaten most fast food. I think I only really eat Chick Fil A now, but Burger King, McDonald's. I haven't eaten that stuff in t two years because I just read. Okay, what is this stuff really doing to my body? Why am I so tired and sluggish all the time? Right. So you have to really educate yourself on what are we putting in our bodies? What are they putting in these vaccines? You really can go to the CDC, yeah, and they outline what it is. Yeah, what are these certain vaccines? So you know, I'm I'm also not a proponent of vaccines. Um, my wife is, and that's okay. We have we have an eight month year old son, so we have conversations about which vaccines we may get him, which vaccines I'm not comfortable with. I talk to his doctor all the time. We go back and forth, and mm -hmm. and we but we have a healthy conversation and platforms like this where we can at least talk right, about it. Right. We can't be 
afraid to bring up these conversations and, and not be miseducated mm -hmm. because there's so much free information out there now. Yeah. We we can all win. Yeah, yeah. we can well, all you, win. Saying, you know what I mean? If you don't want a black person to know something, put, put it in, in the book. book. Mm -hmm. Right? Put it, book. Is it put it in the book because we fear the fact of reading and what reading do to us. We change our minds from where we act like we're We get comfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We get comfortable with the way we live and the things around us, man. And we, we, we lose sight of creating doing for ourselves. Yeah. You know, y'all want somebody to do it for you. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And that's that's not the thing, that's not the way we probably should be being, especially with this pandemic going on, because everybody's waiting for somebody else to tell them something else. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody find it out for yourself. Yeah, you know, find, find it out, out for yourself. yourself. Yeah. Take that little bit of time to go and research some things, man. Yeah. It, it, it's really not that hard. I'm I'm an advocate, man. I mean, listen, we talk about Google, but I'm an advocate saying, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to Google, and I'm going to find out what I can find out. Even if they don't tell me everything I need to know, I'm yeah. going to get what I can find out. You know but that's just, that's just like with the word. Don't sit there, and you can't sit there and listen to the preacher. I was great go there. And take the preacher at his word. There you go. You, you need to study the study. Study, study, study that. For study yourself. That mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, the word is the word because yeah. your interpretation of it may be different. Perception. Exactly. Perception, yeah. perception yeah. makes all, all, all the difference, man. Yeah. When it comes to explaining, I was one of those ones, man, who had a I had a I sometimes I still do it. And I try to catch myself. I mean, y'all haven't known me long enough, but I used to talk fast sometimes, especially when I get ready to explain stuff. Um and I'll go through explaining it more than one time. You know what I'm saying? Or you might see me slow my whole vocabulary up just to get my point across. Because for me, for my perception, if you understand me, I need to know and feel that you understand what I'm getting across. Exactly. I need to draw that pitch out for you, mm -hmm. right? And let you see it for what it is. That would be my job as the person who's giving off whatever I'm giving off to. Mm -hmm. We got this thing that's called a routine, right? And I'm gonna give y'all a little, a little story, right? So. This this my guy, I call him my brother, right? We grew up together and everything. And um in my dining room when I was little, we used to live in the projects in McCullough Homes. And we had this velvet picture on the wall. The velvet background. Mm -hmm. Well it wasn't the paintings. You know, he used to have the afro painting with yeah. the women and all that. It wasn't that. This was a stitching. And the stitching was nothing but a horse head. Right? Now, when I get home from school, I had to do my homework, house chores or whatever before I go out, whatever. But timing. From 2.30 to 4 o'clock, it seemed like it was a long time to me. I couldn't go out, I was sitting there and draw that horse head. And I would draw, you know, Superman and heroes and cartoon characters. All them niggas had horse heads. Mm -hmm. All of them, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was the point. He could get the point of what I was drawing even with them having a horse head. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we call it drawing a horse head. Give him the picture, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that was our thing, man. And that's what I have to do because if not, you'll be like, okay, man, what's this? What are you talking about, bro? Right, you, yeah. I heard this and I heard that, but I missed something else. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I had to go back. So that's just one of the things, man. That was just something that I felt like I wanted to, you know, discuss a little bit or whatever. You so know, two things. One, I was thinking back on the, the vaccines when we were growing up. You know, I know after years later they had where they did the chicken pot vaccine. Right. I can remember when we were growing up, they would bring, they brought us all together. Mm -hmm. So everybody kept chicken pots at the same time and move forward. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing I want to say about the vaccine. I right. remember that, you know, it was like we weren't. That was the about, way. That was the that, way the vaccine. That was how the vaccine then. worked. Yeah, then, right. Yeah. You know, and you know, so that was my way of doing it too. Right. But as far as you know, talking back on now, jumping back over to the books, I was called a book runner. Okay. My older cousins, because I was younger at the time, um, get a they called me a book runner. Forever, because that's what I, I read. My mom bought me a recycle. I would just read books, read encyclopedias. Right. But my mind right. would begin to visualize things. That my first experience with the Bible was like, a uh, picture Bible in my life. And I with all, with all the graphics, the graphics and the pictures graphics in it. So yeah. I begin to visualize, you know, from that point with the Bible. And even now, I like to read. You know, I want to know what it is, what it's about. And I, I'm like you, I'll go to Google. And I also downloaded the Encyclopedia app on my phone. Okay. Too. Okay. You know, it makes it a little different. You know, I still like the book. Right. You know, I still like to be able to pick up a book. Turn the page. Turn the page. Right. You know, because it makes all the difference. Yeah. You know, and um, 
just, you know, talking about the aspect of preaching, you know, I was going to say what you said, you know, because we tell people, hey, we, we, we get our word, you know, and, and this is what comes out, but you still need to go study for yourself, you know. I can't take your word, You can't take my word, right? Your own perspective because it, I, I could be one of them preachers that's saying things, you know, I could be a Jim Jones. <laughs> you know, you, you just never there know. You, you have to go and study, you know, for yourself. Yeah. You know, because your, your interpretation could be completely outside of the box. Right, right. And you teach us something off of your ideals, which, you know, could be a precursor to something that you had going on or you had experienced as a child or trauma there you or go. something. And now you're teaching that to me. I'm just saying, to me. Right. You know, um, and I'm taking you at your word. But I'm not reading it for myself to get the truth for myself. Exactly. And you but can I'm be looking hurting. at what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. gold. Yeah. It's, it's 100. Right. You know? And you could be hurting or something yeah. in that area. And I could be saying something that's just totally, like I said, totally off. Yeah. Where you need to be healed and help. You know, you're being tormented and destroyed. Yeah. You and know? now I got a whole misconception of what the Bible is explaining to me based off of your belief. Right. And your thought and how you interpreted you interpreted that passage where, where you were preaching from, mm -hmm. instead of you know going and looking looking up for myself. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm I'm, okay. I'm gonna listen to you, mm -hmm. but at the same time I need to go back and read because I'm gonna see something that you didn't see. Yes, sir. people put the people for the most part people put the listening like to, to preachers and things of that nature. They put it in that thing because they trust in them. Mm -hmm. They trust in them, and they expect you as as their leader their teacher or whatever you want to call it, however you want to label it they expect you to do or give them the exact answer the, the you know the exact thing for whatever that situation is and again perspective yeah. could be different like you say you could be thinking it or looking at it from way on that yeah. side mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and only from the distance that you're looking at that looking at it at is how you gain your perspective yeah. right but it's the littlest things that change the biggest pictures yeah. right so now he come a little closer and he starts to describe what he feels about that particular situation. And she might say, well, you know, you wasn't, you wasn't looking at this and you didn't add this into that. And once he does that, it changes his perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, that view, that picture becomes that much more clear. Yep. Why try I, try I, the spirit by the spirit. Man. Yeah, you and that's why I believe even when you're doing uh, like uh, a study group, I was going to do whatever it is, keep it an open film. Don't just make it about yourself if you're in the pulpit or be up front as a teacher. Yeah. You know, don't just make it, you know, the the macho. You know, I don't want to do that. I want to paint the picture, open up the book, the book, and then, you know, begin to get the views of what you may be thinking or what you may be thinking. And we can all sit together and, you know, say, okay. Yeah, see, that, that's where fellowship becomes exactly. real important. Exactly, right. Regardless of how you fellowship, but fellowship is really essential. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's what you call looking at the picture a lot closer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really essential. A lot because closer. If, if, if it's just me and I'm looking at something, my mind be all over the place, you know, and I, and I may be thinking about certain things based off of my experiences, you know. Right. But when I'm getting different perspectives from from uh just like this panel right here right. i'm getting different perspectives so now i'm forced to look at it a different way and now something that i may have been struggling with in that particular scripture you may have been able to unpack where i was stuck right um, versus me just saying oh well it just mean that and that's what it is or right. whatever right different perspectives and you know and then you can formulate you can formulate a you know a decent conclusion as to what it is right so fellowship is really essential, you know. And, and, and Sheila, you want to touch on something real quick? I did. A little off topic, but still related. Okay. Um, I, like I said before, I'm a leader and consultant. And I love the vast majority of experience on the panel today. I think you did a great job putting us all together. Thank you. But when you eat well, mm -hmm. you perform better in the bedroom. Hello. Hello. And I love that I'm sitting next to the pastor. <laughs> when you are spiritually connected with God, mm -hmm. you truly know how to love someone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of eating well, you're going to perform better. Uh, excuse me, pastor. <laughs> Your uh, ejaculations are going to taste better. Because <laughs> pineapple is actually sweeten that up. 
you know. I heard um, that. I heard that. I heard that. And I love pineapple, but I heard that. Yeah, it makes your semen taste better. Your oh, cum tastes oh, better. Okay. <laughs> you all adult, man. Yeah. So, yeah, and look, I waited. Adult. I said, should I share this or not? But in it's keeping with good. that toast yeah, aspect, well, you good. know what I mean? So, I have a lot of my ladies that's been purchasing body butters and dildos and things of that nature because they're pleasing themselves. They don't feel sexy because due to this pandemic, right. they couldn't get in the hair store see, until about see, a week you ago. See how, you see how this mm. pandemic then affected everything on every level. Yes. You know what I'm saying? For everybody. Yes. Wait a minute now. Hold on, guys. Some people were saying, I had a young lady on the phone with me last week in tears. She feels that it's the government's way of separating us. Now, they may shut us down on this one mm. because you're not feeling sexy. You're not feeling like you want to make love to your lover because mm. you don't have your hair stuff, your That's makeup serious. stuff. They can't get into get their perms and stuff. <laughs> they can't get their nails done, their feet done. Right. I mean, this is next level thinking, right? Right. right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Oh, that's so, how we feel when we can't get to the barbershop. We get shaped up and things of that nature because I feel real raggedy. I feel real raggedy when I can't get shaped up and cut down. And you know what I mean? Like for for, for myself, I consider myself a pretty nice looking guy. So I want to stay that way for myself. There you go. That's for myself. Now, go. when I decide to put my clothes on and things of that nature, okay, it is still for myself, but I'm doing it so I can get other people to perceive me the way I want them to right. perceive me. Right, right. So all that, oh, I do this for me. And I, mm -mm. we do it for us and everybody else. So stop it with the, I do it for <laughs> me. I don't care what nobody think about me when I put this on and when I come out like this. You do. That's right. That's, that's why you put it on. Right. Well, that's why you put it on. one more thing really quick. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because uh, I know my my guy down there, he's in the mental health field. Okay. Not being able to get your hair and nails done messes with you. Yeah. I had some people say that they were getting depressed. Mm. They don't feel like performing sexually. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a whole piece. The spiritual, the eating right, your sexuality. When you look good, you feel good. Exactly. 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 But you know what? I'm glad you shared that. that. so true. Because as men, we need to hear that. Mm -hmm. And women don't share that. But if we don't know that, it helps us become better men when we truly understand right. where y'all thinking. You know, we may think, oh, your nails, are, you know, you can just do your nails at home. We don't think that the level of no. I have my nails have to be a specific way. Check this out. So share that with us mm -hmm. so we'll understand. I mean, we know, but we truly don't know. I get it, because I mean, I'm not to cut you off, um, and you know this, I'm a tennis short car, car short. <laughs> <laughs> I left my abs in the 90s, and, and I love to shop. Right. And right now, I'm like, I can't even go to the store buy a sweatsuit. Man, listen, yeah. I just did the, listen, <laughs> I, listen, I just did the same thing yesterday, man. I had to go, I had to go, I mean, because I, I just felt like I just needed to go do something and spend some money on myself, right? Mm -hmm. I had a couple of dollars, man, I went and you know, bought me a couple of things, and I was like, damn, this feels so good. Because I ain't done it in so long, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? And then uh, it just made me feel good, man, to be able to purchase a couple of things, man. It's a form of therapy for yourself. Yeah, yes. yeah, well yeah. Said. Well it, said. Is, it is, Everybody man. Everybody has something like this right here is therapeutic for me. Very, it's very. It ain't just therapeutic for you. It's therapeutic for all my son. Asked, panel, my son man. asked me this a while ago. He said, you know, um, my oldest. He said, you know, you're smoking cigars and stuff like that. He said, what, what are you getting out of it? I said, it's therapeutic for me. And he was like, I understand. That. That's all I need to say to him. He said, he said, I get that. I understand. That. You know, just the process. You know, it's relaxing. It's calming. It allows me to spend time with myself and God when I, when I have private time. Okay. And then when I'm with my guys, I draw so much energy right. from the yeah. guys right. who I surround myself with. And that's our time. And we're not just sitting here just smoking cigars. We're talking just right. like this panel's going. You know, my daughter, my daughter asked me the same thing, man. And um, <clears throat> right now she's in the last year of college. And she has her own organic skincare line. It's called J Bay Organics. And she, you know, you know I, I had at my first uh, cigar release party and she did actually well, you know what I mean? And she was like, Dad, like, cigars, like, why are you, like, why are you smoking the same thing in the sun ash? You know what I mean? I was like, yo, I like getting out of it, everything we get to, especially the conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause you already know, I'm a conversationalist. I like to talk. I got voted most talkative in high school. <laughs> <laughs> right, Pep? 
I got voted most and was happy. You couldn't tell me nothing because I knew nobody else wasn't going to get that award but me. <laughs> you earned that but award. But me. Everybody that graduated in 1988 from Douglas with me know in the auditorium that day when they when they announced it, most talkative. Kind of regret. Boy, I jumped up, ran down the aisle, I was happy because I got something, but I knew that was all me. Wasn't well, nobody going to tag that on me. You know what I'm saying? But that was my thing. You know, so me telling my daughter, like, listen, I like to talk. This here, I get the most conversation out of anybody in the thing with. There you go. You know what I'm saying? So as long as they share that with me, that's that's my main thing for this. You know what I mean? So it's, it's relaxing. It's therapeutic. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's definitely a conversation. Yeah. And that's why we sitting here doing we're doing what we're doing with the day. You know what I mean? But back back to what you were saying about feeding the body. Our bodies are equipped to handle, defend, and fix anything that's wrong with us. Talk but when we start, when we start putting all these dead. foreign objects and processed foods and all that, stops the body from doing what it does naturally. Yep. Exactly. Well, so stop it from doing what it does naturally. Exactly. And I'm, I'm not as old as everybody as everybody here. I'm 39. But I remember back in the day, which was back in the day for me, when food was good. Yeah. Food was actually good. I remember going to McDonald's when I was younger and it was good when they were serving real food. Right, right. You know, just the food itself, even, you know, but everything just tasted so much better back then. You know, and I got, you know, country background just like, you know, you or whatever, you know, my, my, father side of the family from North Carolina. Okay. And I remember going down North Carolina for the first time and seeing all the crops. You know, they grew their own, you know, they had their own hogs, they had their own cows, they had chickens and everything. And all, I just remember how good the food was. You know, my daughter, what, what, what my kids, uh, they, they, their grandparents from Alabama. And we used to, when they were little, we used to take them out every summer. You know what I mean? I was spend some time out there, whatever. And um, one thing in Alabama, man, that, that still resonates today is the fact of growing your own food. Yeah. Alabama is one of those places they, they still growing their own crops and they're raising their own farm pigs and chickens and cows yeah. or whatever, man. And, and the landscape is strictly for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything today is so, everything is mass produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to do things to it to. It's more man now. Right. So I gotta do things. I may all they may alter certain things or I gotta spray stuff on here to stop right. it from being, you know, pesticides they, and all like, that. Like what she was she gotta wash her fruits and exactly. vegetables off now exactly. and things of that nature. Yeah, it's crazy man because it's new levels, man. It's yeah. touching us in so many ways, taking these changes. Some of the changes we we, we and it's affecting us, you know what I'm saying? But then there's other changes like like I said, I find myself going out the house enough, I'll go to the store, bro. Just to be out I got house. snacks and stuff in the house, but I'm going to the store just to go, get out the house. You know what I'm saying? I so, might see a couple homies on the way through or whatever, but that's just that. You I feel I mean? like, but, I feel personally, the pandemic, I feel like this was God hitting the pause button. Okay. I look at it from a different perspective. It is what it is. You know, we're going through what we're going through. And I'm just looking at it from a different side, a different perspective. God hit the pause button to have everybody sit back and reevaluate what's important. Because God is a jealous God, and a lot of times we put a lot of things in His place. Yep. So guess what? I'm gonna slow everything down. And I'm gonna take everything away from you that you thought was important right. and force you. Right. Put you in a situation where you gotta talk to me and you gotta get yep. back in that relationship because now you have no control over nothing. Now, everything that you, you know, you felt like you know I can control when I come and when I go. I can control, you know, if I want to go out and grab something, I'm going to go out and grab something, I want to go talk to this person, I can talk to that person. And I can avoid God. I can make you important. Because I like talking to you. Right. Like, I like I like the vibes that I get when I'm talking to you. Right. So God said, okay, I'm going to remove all that. I'll put you in a situation where you have to talk to me. Where, you know, certain things you can't do. Some people don't know where their next meal is coming from. For the people that are not working. Struggling. You know, and, and thank God that my family is not in that position. But I know that God said he would never leave nor forsake us. Okay. okay. So even in the midst of all that's going on right now, we're blessed. And everything is still moving the same way. Right. We may, it may, we may move differently, 
but nothing has stopped and we haven't switched up either. Right. So, so, that, so that's a what he said. My biggest take from this, I think all of us have been moving so much. Mm -hmm. I think this was God's opportunity to tell us to rest. Mm -hmm. okay. People are still trying to move. Right, right. Like you said, you're just going out. I was going out just to go out. And now that we're stuck in the house, it's like, have you taken time? It's good. I mean, you made some valid points earlier about finding something to do, but even in that moment, you're still resting. Yeah. Clearing your mind. Okay, what can I do now to make a little bit more money? What can I do now to to find out a lot of people are struggling with purpose to really sit back and find out what's yeah. my gift yeah what's my gift what's my purpose right. but i think this opportunity this moment that we're in should everybody should take advantage just to rest just to get some rest at some level find some type of rest find some type of strategy some type of business some type of something to do you know i was um, i was watching something the other day and it was talking about money and how, you know, in school they don't teach us about money. But if you think about the game of Monopoly, you play Monopoly to buy houses. Monopoly has been teaching us. Yeah. We just ain't been paying attention, paying attention. Yeah. to okay. buy real estate. It was a simple, oh, yeah. it was a simple game for us. And, and, then you, you know, buy a building. And again, it's something I never really thought it, about looking at it that way. Money, you know what right. I'm saying? So you right, we did have the teachings there, and the Monopoly was in every household, bro. Yes. Every household. It was in every household. <laughs> that was Still a big in. game. I'm going to tell you yes. the two games that every household had, <laughs> right? That was games that mattered to us, because we didn't take advantage of them. Monopoly and Clue. Right. And third one, Scrapper. Mm -hmm. Don't try to read, know, know the meanings of words. There mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, listen, man, I, look, again, I appreciate each and every one of y'all for joining my panel today, man. I see that we all are to the third end, but for the most part. Let's give a rating real quick. You know what I mean? We're going to start down here to share. You know what I mean? Tell them again what you were smoking. And so this is the Corilla, I think it was. Corilla, um, Elite. And it started off kind of woodsy. It's kind of like a medium stick. It's a smooth burn, um, easy drawer. Um, How'd it taste? I like it. I like it. And I like sweet stuff. Okay, so the, so, co so the construction of it, was it construction as well? It yeah. held up really well. Held up really well? Yeah, because my ash game was good. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> so it held up really well. I, I liked it. Okay, so you give it a four star? I give it a four star. Four star. Let's move over to Preach. All right, all right. Like I said, the Victor Sinclair, uh, what was it called? This is the uh, Bohemian Bamboo. It's a pretty light, you know, cigar. Normally I have a dark one, on, right. but this had a nice uh, smoke to it, and it, it stood up very well. So I give this a four star. Me, I'm smoking on like Lord Cuban at Stelly. Um, it's, a, it's a Robusto Maduro. Um, a burn, a burn was pretty okay for, for somewhat. It was kind of awkward. You know, we kept burning funny, but it always caught up. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna give it a negative on that side of, of burning funny. But for the construction, the draw, the taste, I'm, I'm liking what I'm getting. It's a medium to full body stick. And um, it's worth having in the humidor. You know what I mean? So I'm going to tell y'all now, if, if I'm smoking it, I'm more or less going to try to make sure that you get it, you know, good enough to put it in the humidor. You know what I mean? Okay. I had a Perdomo champagne. Um, the draw and the taste was good. Today I'm gonna give the construction a zero because <laughs> it just it was only here for and I just got it yesterday. I okay. just got it yesterday. Now, usually it doesn't do this. Right. Usually I would give it a four off top because it's one of my favorite cigars. That and I usually get the um, the Macanudos. Okay. But um, construction today just hit a zero. I mean the thing just it just was me and Trevor was over here talking about it. It just was falling apart. <laughs> so, but, uh, so you, you give know, you give them three I, stars? I, overall I give it a two. Oh overall, two okay give it two. Give it two okay okay. Uh, so I had the Java, it's a cherry something, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's a Java. Um, the oil was good, the burn was good, it's pretty nice. Um, it's a medium, the full body, something uh, different. Every time I buy sticks, I'll, I'll get my go-to, and I'll get two or three is something outside of my there normal. There you go. And I like it, I, I'll give it a four. I'm glad you gave it for man. And, and look, with what you just touched on, that's a good way to study cigars. Yeah. Buy something new that you haven't yeah. had yet. You know what I mean? I always ask the house for a recommendation. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, I the house, the same thing. if the house has a house stick, I always get a house stick. Yeah. And then I find me something that I know that I'm good on. Right. You know I go saying? in with what I know I'm going to get. Give me those three right there. And I tell them, I said, I want to I, I 
normally around the medium. I said I want something, I'll normally get a medium to full, uh, and I'll get a full body. You know, I said I want something different, I want to step outside of mm -hmm. my box. You know, and based off the preferences that I give them, they say, oh, you know, so whatever your recommendation is. Mm -hmm. So, and I haven't been disappointed yet. Mm. So. Cool. So, folks, we're going to wrap this one up, right? We all got we all got good sticks. Um, you know, Chris for the most part probably gave us the lowest rating because of what it did. Um, <laughs> on that note, man, listen, it's cigar toads. We here. We are gonna keep pushing the culture forward. We tote leaf the leaf. You know what I mean? I am a cigar toad. See the shirt. You see the hat. We we'll catch y'all on the next one. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Cigar toads. We out.